Hello everybody, it's me, Alex the Hunted, and today we are doing a bit of an audio uh, kind of podcast uh, review for the new Pixar movie, which is which we'll be talking about, called Inside Out. And of course, if I'm doing a podcast, I can't do it alone, so I'm joined by the lovely Autumn Elizabeth. Thank you, thank you very much, Alex. I appreciate your wonderful words about me. Well, eh, anyway, you gotta give the ship or something. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um... So yes, uh, Inside Out's the new movie by Pixar, and for for basically just to get right to it, it's good to finally have Pixar back. I personally really liked it. Um, I thought, to be honest, I kind of thought it was going to be stupid, and you know, like I thought it was going to be stupid to be honest, because a lot of the new cartoons and stuff that come out with are stupid. But then I personally really loved it. I thought it was really good, but like. Per- I personally love the beginning mm-hmm. with la- with the I lava thing. Yeah. The floors. The, it yeah. was like a volcano thing and he was like please give me some someone to lava. <laughs> yeah. It was cute. It's stuff like it's stuff like it's like um cuz when I first when I was going I was a little bit um cautious when I first saw it because Pixar last few years have not been on top of their form recently, you know. With stuff like Cars 2 and Monsters University, they were mm-hmm. not brilliant. I never really was fond of the Cars movie, to be honest. No, Cars... Well, no. Car, uh, anyway. Um, it's getting a third movie, so... I really like Ratatouille, though. I think mm-hmm. Ratatouille was, like, the best last P- Pixar movie I really saw before it set out. Yeah. Um, and that was years ago. Yeah, and uh, now it's it's Pixar are back in full swing with uh, Inside Out, and it's honestly like, it's honestly like they've they've just listened to what people have been saying, and also been looking at. I would say because from stuff that happens in the movie, it's kind of like um, you've seen How to Train Your Dragon too, haven't you? Mm-hmm. What I really liked about the movie is I like how it had the things with the emotions and stuff. Like mm-hmm. it actually made me think if I actually had someone in my brain telling me what to do, <laughs> like, like. I've been thinking about if I have little people like that inside my brain. And then um, I took a test right before we started filming this. And um, it was going to say what inside out character, like emotion you're most like. And guess which one I got, Alex? I saw your anger. Yeah, I'm anger, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm anger, yeah. Yeah, and so I'm like, a nice person. It's just anger fits me. Yeah, people piss me off. <laughs> but. Yeah. yeah. But it's also actually that's kind of a question I've always thought though is I actually thought while watching the movie, um, so because so, you see these emotions going on like you know, mm-hmm. but they're not just like they're they're not just the what they don't just have the one emotion like you see them have other emotions throughout the uh, mm-hmm. thing. So does that mean the emotions have little people inside their heads controlling their emotions? Okay, I said that like um, like each character seemed like they had some happiness in them. Like anger had. Sometimes when he was ha- when he would like have personalities of being happy, it's like they all had moments where they each had their happy moments. Mm-hmm. Like Joy, she had her moments when she was sad. It's like they each had like all the emotions that yeah. humans have. Exactly, but it was stuff like um, except for their main emotion, which is either anger, sadness, or whatever. Exactly, and what was um, also uh, it was very it was also very interesting how they um, kind of explained everything about the movie, like um, you know how like how they explained what how dreams what dreams are made of, you know, like sort of stuff like they make it like oh it's like Hollywood, like it's a production company. They have writers and yeah, actors and stuff. I thought that was pretty cool. Like it was showing like how you do the dreams and stuff. And I'm the thing is, I was thinking about it. I was like, I wonder if this could really be real. But then I was like, if this was really real, I wouldn't be having all the nightmares I've had, and I would have made a lot of more wise decisions. So obviously, this can't be. I really don't have little people in my brain. No. Well, no. Uh, but it's stuff. Uh, but again, it's it's stuff like that. It's like um, I really liked. Um, uh, but also like kind of like. Um, uh, the movie like starts off. It starts off and like he was like Joy is basically running the whole thing. Like everyone else, all the other emotions kind of don't really do much, and they also just kind of shit on sadness all the time. Uh, like they treat they treat sadness like mm-hmm. crap in this movie. Uh, but it's sort of like as ta- I like how at the end sadness came out to be like the hero. Yeah. Oh, uh, we will be spoiling. Like this movie. everybody disliked sadness, and then sadness came out to be like the hero at the end. 
By the way, we are we uh, we should do spoilers then. We should be spoiler warnings if we're going to talk about stuff like that. But yeah, like um, uh, but yeah, like I know what you mean. Is like um, I know a big spoiler. Well, let's save it for a little bit first before um, but yeah, it's like um, like the movie isn't like um, it isn't like some. It isn't like it's. It's kind of like this, you know, like, sort of like a road trip movie, if you know what I mean. Like these people are stuck in this one place and they have to get back to where they belong, sort of thing. Like it's that movie t- trope. Yeah, least. that was what it kind of seemed like. <laughs> but the story it didn't seem like that. Yeah, but the story isn't. Um, but the story isn't. Oh, let's make sadness happy. It's more. It's more uh, joy realizing that all sadness is needed and stuff like that. Like all the other emotions are needed. It can't, everything can't just be joy, mm-hmm. happiness, and everything. Yeah, it feels like Joy kind of realized, you know, that, like, she needs a little of everything in her, that, uh, Ryan needs a little of everything in her, like, fear, anger, Mm -hmm. sadness, you know, like, that she needed to have, like, a little, each of everything in her, not just happiness. Exactly, yeah. Um. See, that seemed like she thought that, like, you know, she needed just happiness. Mm -hmm. And it's stuff like, um, you know. Should we talk about Mr. Bing Bong? Shall we? I, he was kind of, uh, he wasn't my, (laughs) he, what? He wasn't my favorite character. I loved Bing Bong. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of love that how his, um, <laughs> he's, he's basically, who what Bing Bong is, because they actually kept him, he wasn't in, in any of the trailers, if you look at it. Uh, Bing Bong was basically. Yeah, he wasn't, because I remember watching the trailers and I never saw him. Yeah. He, he's basically Riley's old imaginary friend when she was young, and he says that he's going to help out Sadness and Joy, who get. Uh, who get lost, who get basically chucked out of the um, main control room because of shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it's funny how he's made out of cotton candy and like a cat and a whole bunch of things. Yeah, well, it's like a, what an imaginary friend would look like, you know. And um, he mm-hmm. basically is the person who like tries to take them back to where they belong, but then, uh, should we spoil it? And like his his reason is they said oh if I'll if um if we help you we'll make sure Riley remembers you stuff like that but it's like um but then they um well Riley's not gonna remember you now but now there's in this but this movie is like Spoil. it does what the Pixar's what good animated movies what good kid movies in general should do is they aren't just like happiness and goofiness all the time it has to ha- it has its moments if you know it has its emotional moments and it doesn't and also what it's like so mm-hmm. um basically to set it up um uh riley uh, no sorry no joy and uh bing bong are stuck in this like basically the, the trench of where all the forgotten memories go all the memories that are going to be forgotten that's where they all go mm-hmm. and they have to get out and they find uh basically the um uh, basically, a, a, a what's what are they called? Because we don't have them. Those like little trail, those like, like little trailer things. But it's like Riley's uh, the rocket thing, the, the rocket to the moon sort of thing, the yeah. rocket rainbow thing. The yeah that, and yeah, that um, thing. they're trying to get back up to, to the uh, to the normal memory area, but they it's too heavy for the two of them, and they can't get up. So on the last run when they go, it's the they have to. Uh, Bing Bong basically sacrifices himself to uh, go up to so Joy can get up back to up to the top, and it's also it's it's like really imagine it's like it's not like a, uh, a sacrifice that he didn't want to do. Like he 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 knew what he was doing when he did it. Like they would before they he knew that he was going to end up being forgotten, but. Mm-hmm. Well, I think he did it because even though he knew that, like, like Ryan would forget about him, I think that, like, he thought that, you know, like, it was best that, like, you know, she got her happiness and everything because he knew if Joy didn't get back to her, that her yeah. whole life would, like, go way, way down the drain. Yeah, exactly. Which we did see that her life was going to if Joy mm-hmm. never returned. Because and Joy sadness and, yeah. never returned Because to. Joy and sadness weren't there, all the, the emotions, was it? I did cry, though, when... Yeah, but when Bing Bong died, Bing Bong, mm-hmm. I, like... I didn't cry, but, you know, I had tears in my eyes. You know, it wasn't emotional, but, I mean, I cried in a couple of other movies when other things died more than Bing Bong. Just because, like, you know, like, Bing Bong didn't die a painful death. You know, he was, like, happy when he basically died. Like, you know, he was waving and... He faded away, basically. Yeah, like, he faded away. Like, um, you know, it, it was, like, an okay thing for him. 
Yeah. So, but, I mean, it didn't really upset me really that much. I just thought it was But it's one of those things, like, which I say has Train Your Dragon 2 did very well, was, like, they didn't do the typical, like, movie trope. It was, like, the characters died. Oh, no. But, oh, wait, no, we can bring mm-hmm. them back. They, they're back now, you know, because of, like, the power of magic or something like that. We brought them back. Uh, what um, being what happened to Bing was, like, uh, they did what other movies, like, they get they get in the habit of, like, oh, no, the character's dead. Uh, mm-hmm. But, oh, wait, no, we can bring them back for the power of magic or something like that. In this, like, in this movie and also, like, in How to Train Your Dragon 2, like, when the characters, when the character dies, like, they never they come back. They don't come back. They're not coming back. They die. They're... <laughs> They they're gone forever. It's sort of like that thing is like. That's how you should do it. Like that because if, if you kill someone off and then just bring them back, that completely ruins the emotion. You know what I mean? It doesn't become, as emotional anymore. But, but then again, Inside Out did also have its other emotional moments where um, so basically during the end of the movie um, Riley decides to run 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 away from home because she's moved to a new place and she hates it there and she wants to move, she mm-hmm. wants to run away back to her old place. Well, I mean, if I if I personally ended up having to move somewhere new and you know I just didn't really like it, mm-hmm. then and I was in Ryan's position, I personally feel like that I would feel the same way. But you know, she's so young too; she don't understand the. I don't think she would even understand the consequences of running away, of like the different things that could actually happen to her. But that's also the things like the emotion, the emotions. Um, like it was anger who was doing it. He was basically he was controlling her to say like they should run away. Um, uh huh. Like I, it. Like at the end of the movie, she ended up talking to her parents, saying that she wanted to move back to Minnesota. And you know, if she could, it like I feel like if she could have just done that all along, like if the other emotions could have helped her do that mm-hmm. instead of like you know having her run away, then mm-hmm. that that would have worked. But you know, they but, but it was sort of that thing. Is like, but it was weren't... it was sort of that thing. It was anger who was controlling her, and you know, when people are angry, they tend oh, to make, yeah. they tend to make the wrong decisions. Yeah, I remember Anger said though when she was getting on the bus that it was that she shouldn't that she shouldn't be running away. Mm-hmm. He said something like that, you know, like where he was starting to change it. Yeah. So I think that eventually they all started to kind of understand that you know it wasn't the right thing for her to actually do. Uh-huh. Exactly. Well, so I think she's like you're saying she's twelve year old. She she's uh, naive, so she wasn't exactly um, you know mm-hmm. not being, the smartest. Yeah. yeah, it's like you don't really know like running away or wait, this could go horribly wrong. Mm. Yeah, compl- definitely. Mm-hmm. I feel like sadness though, because like, I, like sadness really did play a big part in the movie. I feel because mm-hmm. like I just thought like at first like sadness, like I didn't think sadness was gonna be like one of the main main characters or nothing because you know it seemed like nobody really cared or liked her that much at first for as an emotion, mm-hmm. and then um, you know she ended up going on a journey with joy, and then that ended up happening. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, and it wasn't sadness that changed. It was joy that changed, if you know. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, she re- like joy realized sadness is needed for to have, you know. Sadness is an is a need of an emotion that you can't just everything just can't be amazing all the time. Right, because like if you're happy all the time, it's like you're not gonna know anything else, and then you don't live and you don't mm-hmm. learn. Uh-huh. So I feel like the movie. I think it did. I feel like it did teach some lessons to like younger kids. As in such as, like, not running away. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like just the the movie did, like, help kids learn right from wrong, kind of. But, like, I'm not really good at explaining it. Of how I, I know feel. what you mean. I know what you mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's sort of that thing of, like, um, it's... I know what, exactly what you mean. It's sort of that thing is um, the movie sort of teaches um, kids, like... Um, it's all kind of it's all that things like don't hide your emotions you know sort of thing like don't pretend that you're happy or sad or anything or you're happy all the time if you're not like let um have your emotions like if you're truly feeling down or sad or anything like that then let people see that you are that way and they they'll help you if you especially like the parent her parents if you know what I mean mm-hmm and then that you know like that's true that they should always end up talking to their parents because like like that way, like like if somebody who was watching the movie or, like wanted to run away or something, it shows them that you know it'd be best to talk to the parents about their problems. Exactly. I mean, I've heard some people complain saying like, "Oh, Riley came, came off as a bit selfish because like she wanted to, she wanted to run away and all that sort of stuff." Uh, 
but her her dad was going through like a really stressful time as well with work and all that sort of thing. But it's sort, of, but um, but I go for that. But I go for that thinking like, but she's twelve years old. Like she doesn't fully, you know, she is twelve years old. She's naive, so she doesn't really kind of understand why all these things are. Changes. To be honest, it kind of feels like, you know, it's like robots. Like, the humans are actually robots getting controlled. Because, like, during the movie, you know, like, the emotions would control everything they do. So, yeah. it, it kind of felt more like, like kind of robotish, in my opinion. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like, like the emotions were the ones who choose what you eat, choose what you do. Exactly, yeah. I kind of wish that they show the other emotions of, like, the mom and the dad. Like, I know that they show their emotions a couple of times, but I kind of wish that they should have, like, showed the emotion characters, like, you know, a little bit more. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Um, yeah, it should have, like, had the uh, other, the parents see the, the parent, well, the, the parents' side of things as well more than, but it was sort of a, but yeah, I know what you mean. Um, mm -hmm. uh, although I did, like, uh, at the end of the movie, like, um, they get this new console and it has this big red button that says puberty on it. It's like, oh yeah, that was funny. I was reading that and it was like perverted. I forgot how they pronounced it. But uh, that was really yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. So the life is like, oh, I'm sure that's nothing to worry about. Which also, if you think about it, means it's a great lead up to this a sequel if they ever make a sequel. Yeah, I was thinking about that. That um, I was wondering if they might end up having a sequel actually. Mm -hmm. Because going through puberty is an incredibly emotional time for a teenager. Mm -hmm. They might actually do that, possibly. Um, I feel that if this movie gets enough hits, like, you know, a lot of people watch it and it gets the good star ratings, then they probably would end up making a sequel because I didn't think, I thought it was a really good movie for a cartoonish For an animated thing. movie. Yeah, I for an animated movie. Because I'm not really into animated movies that much, but I thought it was pretty good. Mm hmm I mean, it didn't. Um, I looked at the box office. It didn't. It on its opening weekend, it didn't beat Jurassic Park, uh, Jurassic World. I don't think nothing would beat that. That movie was awesome. Um, that movie actually did have me crying. <laughs> Jurassic World. Uh, it didn't beat Jurassic World, but it did come second, and it did make a lot of money. So, mm -hmm. if that continues, then I do see it probably making a, it probably getting a sequel. I mean, it's definitely getting critical. Uh, it's definitely getting good critical um, reaction. Right, and since it's in second place of like Jurassic uh, World, mm -hmm. I feel like you know that they probably will end up making a sequel. Because if a movie does get really good ratings and good stars and makes like a lot of money on it, then mm -hmm. you know that shows the producers that people really liked it, and you know that people they want, want they'd like to have yeah. another one, and then that will make them want to make another one because they'll also be making more money. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we know there's going to be Jurassic World. There's going to be a Jurassic World sequel. I mean, oh yeah, definitely. That definitely. made because so, that movie's made so much money. Yeah, I saw it the um, second night it came out, and I, oh my gosh, I love that movie so much. Yeah, um, it's like, but also it's like I keep on thinking like 2015 is it's such a good year for movies if you consider everything that's been coming out and co going to be coming out. Mm -hmm. I agree because there has been a lot of good movies I have seen this year at the theater and then I know there is a lot of also more good movies coming out and um, for example like they're coming out with Ted to Sex mm. L yeah oh the new Magic Mike movie you're going to be seeing that are you like, you know they've just came out with a really lot of good movies and you know I keep looking to see what new movies are coming out for like the rest of the year that's going to be at the theater, and it looks that like there is a couple movies I want to see at least. Well, I mean, if you, that come if, out once a month. I mean, if we're talking about movies that are coming out, I mean, we got the well, Star Wars at the end of the year. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm excited for that too. And also, like that's one thing is like all those reports saying like you know, oh Jurassic World, it's the highest, it's made, it's broken the record for the most amount of money made on an opening weekend. But then mm -hmm. Star Wars is going to come out in December, so you know, and Star it's probably Wars going to break the record. Yeah, Star Wars is going to make so much money. Yeah, I'm excited to see that one also. Uh, new James Bond as well. Mm-hmm. I know that they're also coming out with um. Oh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, ca catching fire. Oh yeah, break uh, hunting uh, the Hunger Games. Yeah, but Hunger Games, they're also going to be coming out with the last Hunger Game movie that's supposed to be the last one in November, and you know that's 
that's since it's the last one and it's popular yeah. that's going to get a lot of money because it followed it. the routine that all book series seems to be following right now is that the last book has to be split into two parts Mm -hmm. I'm personally ex excited for um, the movie called The Gift to come out. It's like a horror movie, but it's like a serial killer movie at the same time. But like, if you watch the preview for it, it looks really, really good. Hmm. Yeah. Have you seen The Babadook? Oh, yes. I watched that on um, Netflix. Yeah. That movie was crazy. I I couldn't believe it. Like, I thought it was so crazy. Like, I got upset when the dog died. But like, I thought it was a really crazy interesting movie it's a psychological horror yeah like i thought at first it was boring and then i was watching the whole thing and i'm like this is actually a pretty good movie <laughs> did you get it's, did you get scared did, did I, I get scared it? um i thought it, there was some parts that i did jump and i did think were pretty scary but i mm. did think it was a good movie yeah i did too uh speaking of horror movies the new trailer for the new paranormal activity movie just came out I personally don't like the Paranormal Activity movies just because I'm not that into horror movies. Like, I love horror yeah. movies, but I'm not into the ghost ones just because the ghost horror movies, like, those don't really scare me or excite me that much. And also, the Paranormal Activities, well, pretty much all fan footage movies now are just jump scares, if you know what I mean. It's like, just flash something in your face really fast. Sort of mm -hmm. thing. I know I'm going to sound lame for this, but I'm excited to see the Peanut movie. No, you don't sound lame because I am too. It's, it's Snoopy and Charlie <laughs> yes. Brown. Yeah, and then um, I'm I just went I've been going through the thing as we've been talking, looking at the movies coming out, mm -hmm. and um, January 29th of 2016, they're going to be coming out with a Kung Fu Panda three. Oh yeah, the oh yeah. I just saw that. I'm really excited to see that because I love Kung Fu Panda and um, I love the first and the second one. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm hoping, I know Kung yeah. Fu Panda made a lot of money, so I know it's going to be pretty good for the third one when it comes out. I really am hoping it doesn't fall into that uh, problem that usually, like the third sequel of a movie, isn't the best. You know, is not the is the worst one if you know them. You know. Well, and yeah, I thought for Shrek though, for like Shrek one, two, and three, I thought those all were pretty good though. Like, but I feel like Shrek kind of like the fourth one wasn't that good in that one. I thought all of them were good, but I thought the fourth one was kind of off. Yeah. Well. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it was time for the series to end anyway. But yeah, I agree completely. Yeah, I think I put in all the parts that you know that I thought were important and I thought that were meaningful to say. Yeah, I mean, it's a very. It, it was it, it, I just I did really like it. I thought it was a. Um, it was it's Pixar back doing what Pixar do best. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that everybody should go, that like everybody should probably see it. Um, I don't think it's a movie for everybody, but I do think that a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of people would um, like to see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that would actually really enjoy it. So I recommend for a lot of, for everyone to go see it, that, you know, it's oh, into that type of movies, I guess. <laughs> I remember but um, that's all yeah. I have to say for the review. It's good that uh, this movie didn't rely on like gross out humor and like there was no poo or fart jokes, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I feel like that it was more appropriate and like like it was more mature than mm -hmm. a lot of the new movie animated movies that have been coming out recently. So I thought that the maturity level of it was really good. Uh huh. It's like it's it does it has that humor level which kids will get and also uh, adults will get as well. Right. Like mm -hmm. I definitely laughed through it, and everybody that was at the theater when I saw it, they were all laughing through it as well. Mm -hmm. And also the point I'd like to raise up is also um this movie didn't have a villain. If you saw like it didn't have a bad guy oh no it didn't they didn't have like a bad guy going like i'm going to take over riley's m mind <laughs> right like most movies do have the uh, villains yeah this was kind of just about the journey if you know what i mean mm. yeah i think that it was very well done yeah so yeah, that's our thought. Um, final thoughts. It's a very good movie. You should go see it. Uh, if everyone's, everyone should see it. So we want Pixar to know we want more of this and not go back to like Cars 2 level stuff. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that was our review of Inside Out. Um, thank you very much, Autumn, for joining me. Thank you. And we will see you guys next time with whatever the hell we decide to review next.